eu, 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 Good morning, Edgar. Good morning. How are you? Good. Everybody's about to Huh? Everybody's about to come in. What's up, fam? Jay, I see you. <laughs> no, no, I feel like I haven't seen you in so long, you know? What's up, guys? We're going to give it a couple minutes, get everybody on here. Edgar's admitting everybody I can see. Thanks, Edgar. Yes, sir. What time is it? What do we got? I think we got a couple minutes still. All right, yeah, we got a minute or two. Hey, put 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 that on mute or turn turn that whatever's playing off. All right, guys, we'll give it one more minute before we uh, go ahead and kick this thing off this morning. I'm going through. Seeing who we all got on. What's up, Marquise? Marissa, you should be on fire right now.
Maddie Diolis. Hey. Good to see you, man. Tommy, Andreas, Manrique, Faith, you guys with us? Yes, clock. sir. Let's get the cameras on. Omar, Shayla. Good morning. Good morning. Are your guys' cameras working this morning? Tommy Whalen. There we go, Matt Jans. Casey, where's Mason? Looks like we got everybody in, in, in the office over there. All right, hey guys. Um, we have our, our very special guest is on the call right now. And uh, I don't wanna hold him back. He got a, a busy day ahead of him as well. So I appreciate uh, everyone hopping on the call this morning, but especially you, uh, Maddie, I appreciate you taking the time to spend with us uh, this morning on a very special Wednesday morning. Uh, we're off to the races right now. Guys, we're off to the races. Uh, we had an amazing Monday to kick things off. Yesterday, we really got things going. Uh, we're pretty close right now to, to about 40,000, 38 to 40,000, which puts us at 20% of our goal. Today would be amazing and would be absolutely critical for us to, to get the 40% of our goal by tomorrow. And then we'll go into the rest of the week and we got it all planned out. So we're going to need a big one today. 40,000 would put us where we need to be. Um, but with, uh, with us today, guys, is uh, my very, very, very good friend. Uh, I was friends with him before this company. And uh, it's just such a privilege to be able to work with your friends. And I think that's one of the reasons why me and him have been so successful together. Uh, uh, we actually uh, shared the stage multiple times. He was the number one MGA in the company the year I was the number one RGA in the company. And then a few years later, he was the number one RGA in the company. And then the year after that, we shared the stage again. And I was the number one RGA in the company. He was number two RGA in the entire company. And this is my best friend who came into the business with me you know, uh, 11, 12 years ago now. And, uh, and man, um, we're, I, I, we we're at each other's weddings. This gentleman, we we're in, in each other's weddings. Um, he has developed, uh, more MGAs, more MGAs than, than anybody that I know in, in our agency, uh, over the last 12 years. Um, he's a amazing father, uh, I loves being a dad probably more than anything else, probably more than the millions of dollars that he's made. He's been a millionaire over and over again, and you wouldn't even know it if you met him out, besides probably the, the Gucci shades and the Gucci belt and all the stuff he got dripping from him. But besides that, <laughs> if you just met him and he had some flip-flops on, you would never know because uh, he don't act like it. The biggest pri prize for him is not all the trophies, but it's, it's, it's his kids. And, and his wife and his family and his father and his mother. And he's been to every convention with me and every convention he goes to, you know, who he brings number one, his dad, his ace, his A1 from day one, he brings his dad. So he'll be in Cancun this year with Mr. Diolis again, uh, you know, as making make an appearance for us. So if you guys are in Cancun, uh, you definitely are gonna get to meet uh, Mr. Matty Diolis. But, uh, but man, what a privilege, what an honor to call you a friend and, 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 a, and a partner in business and crime and business. And um, guys, we, we got a special one for us today, guys. So without further ado, um, one of the top RGAs, he's a partner with Aries Agencies, right where we came from. Everybody from Aries already knows him. Um, and, uh, and I hope everybody here gets to know Maddie a lot more and more over, over the years and over the, the time that we get to spend here. So pass it over to you, Maddie. Thanks for hopping on, brother. Hey, you say Sha City. Sha City. Sha City. I'm coming home again. I've been waiting for an hour to play that. Yeah. <laughs> 
I've been waiting for an hour for y'all to uh, to play that. What a thank you, did thank you for the intro and um, hats off, guys. Nice start to the to the week. You know, I'm sitting here thinking how cool. You know, it's probably what eight a.m. there. It's nine a.m. here, and uh, it's snowing. Tommy, if I turn out, you know, I don't know if you guys got hit with it, but if you look outside of Pittsburgh right now, we're just getting we're getting we're getting pelted with um with snow. But you know, one of the cool things about AIL is like I never think of this as work. You know, I'm like, it's not like I got to get on and do work. It's like I get to get on and talk to my pals and I'm humbled to do so and be able to share a bit of advice with you guys early in the morning on request. And, uh, you know, a lot of times in life, you're either a, you're in the game, you're a player or you're a hater or you're a fan. And I fall into the fan. I'm a player here, but I'm a big fan of your agency. And uh, I feel like I got skin in the game. It's like my brothers and sisters out there going to do it. So I'm rooting for you. And uh, Tommy, heck of a job, man. You know, there's always that nervousness taking an SGA contract, moving your family and whatnot to a whole new state and, and city and starting from scratch and putting an office together, man, and a couple, you know, Urankos and your dad and people going with you on a leap of faith because they trust your leadership and what you guys have done in the mix of COVID and, and everything that's happened over the past year to get the deal to how many people I see on the screen. And uh, I know how hard it is to grow a business in this deal. And, you know, at the same time, it's easy if you put the work in. So. Uh, hats off guys to what you're doing and the month that you had last month and uh, you just keep following this guy's lead and and, and and let him push you you know that's what you need out of a leader you need somebody to push you and think big or you wouldn't need a leader so when he's pushing you it's out of love and it's only good for you so hey hats off for you guys I won't take too much of your time I got like six tips that poured out of me and I'm going to try to do them all in like a minute two minutes like what can I say to this group that gets to hear Tommy and all these other great leaders what kind of stuff can I can I give them some? I'm just going to fly through this. It's just on my heart. You know, first one, I, I sat down to give you guys advice on a, on a big week. And I end up, the, the big week advice is, is life advice, it seems like, too. You know, it's like big week advice, and then it ties into also life advice. So you could probably take it and go either way with it. But the first one, anybody know who Eric Giglione is? Anybody ever heard of Giggs? Yeah, Coach Giggs, you guys probably familiar with him. It looks like he could be Tommy's uncle, you know, like a distant family or someone in, the, in the, or Giglione. So, you know, there's certain people that would give you advice throughout your career that you hear things that just stick with you because you're going to hear a lot of advice, but some of them will just, boom, oh, it like stops you dead and it resonates for a long time. And I remember asking him, we're in like Miami or something. And, I, and he was at this time, 32 years in the business, a couple hundred thousand a month in, re, in residual. I said, Giggs, why do you? Why did you last? What did you think it was that caused you to last and do so well, and other people's not last? And he said, "Well, Matt, he was like, it was all about the way I responded to things. He was like, all it is is just how I responded to things when things were good, when things were hard, when the company changed bonuses and people got pissed off and got out. When we, I got no showed in the field, it was that 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 is how. If I can attribute any of it." To, to doing so well it was just my response to things and it makes so much sense because how you react how you respond is way more important than what happens to you right it's not what happens to you it's how you respond to these things over the next week week and a half over the next 20 years of your career in your life why because the reaction in the response is the controllable that what happens isn't the controllable. You can't really control what happens, but you want to get take control of your life. It's basically saying, I'm going to take control of my responses to whatever comes my way, whatever comes your way on the phones, whatever comes your way in the field, whatever your plan is, whatever happens to you, that's not necessarily controllable. What you choose to do is so anytime I'm going through a battle or a hard decision or anything like that, or something that pisses me off happens to me, I'm always like, Matt, this is a test to see how you respond, always. So if you think that way, you're typically going to respond back in the way. Well, isn't it funny in school that we get these lessons and then we take a test? And in life, we get the test and then we learn a lesson. It's like complete backwards. So, so how do you respond to things one? So you might be saying, all right, Matt, well, how do you respond? What's a good formula? I got a good fail-proof formula for how to respond to things. And this is what we teach in leadership. Anytime you're in a tough situation, a hard situation, you have a, something that you're facing, you're just not sure what to do, whether that's family or whatnot. Um, 
I always preach, start with the end in mind. So what is the outcome that you want? And then that should help you decide how to react because you, we're in a results oriented business. So if you just focus on what is my required outcome, what is my required result? Start with the end in mind. Your brain will start coming up with ways on how to react congruent with getting that result. And how do you react to things can decide whether somebody's on stage and accepting awards and loved and endeared or, they, or, or if they're in prison, you know, or if they're in a different career. So how you react to things is going to be super. What is it? Cause plus reaction is equals outcome. Is that what it is? TV, I think you like that one. I, I might be wrong. Cause, I think it's cause plus reaction equals outcome. So no matter, they call a tough situation a tough situation because there's not an easy answer. So when you're in a tough situation, it's a tough situation because there's not an easy answer. So what you do, you wrap your brain about what you want, just the result. And then everything that you do should be aligned with just getting that result. And that will make it easy response. Three, this week's goals, this, this week's life goals. You're probably not going to perform <coughs> above the expectation you set for yourself. I think that's fair to say. Matt Watson. Matt Watson, what's on? Matt means gift of God. So I'm going with you. We're, bro we're brothers, Matt. If you set a goal for this week for 4,000, most likely you're not going to hit 16,000, right? If one of you out there sets a goal for yourself for 6,000, most likely you're not going to hit 20,000. Why? Because we perform right up to a little lower, maybe hit slightly above the expectation that we we set for ourselves, right? So don't do yourself, don't you go getting inadequacy syndrome on me, self-doubt syndrome on me, thinking small syndrome on me and selling yourself short this week or this year with your goals. I'll give you a laundry list of people that started here day one from 21 years old to 70 years old that one year later, they were making a quarter million dollars and their life had, had changed. And they didn't get that by in their brain thinking small, maybe I can make 40K this year. So depending on what you want, raise your level of expectations to yourself and then start believing it. Never reduce the target this week, just increase the activity. It's not the target that's the problem. <laughs> so in your goal, whatever expectation you set, you don't ever have to reduce that target, just increase what you do to, to get that. It's never the, the bar, target's problem. Four, go for the mo. What are these, maybe you're brand new. Everybody's in a different piece of the puzzle at this game, it, it, on this call. Whether, some of you guys are on fire right now. Girls are on fire. Some of you are doing decent. Some of you are maybe stagnant, not doing well, right? Everybody's in different places in their career, in their lives, right? So what do these weeks do? If anything else, use these weeks as a reason to create awesome habits in your life, work habits, thinking big habits, chasing something habits, playing together as a unit habit. And what these weeks do, oh, obviously it's the ALP and money that everybody makes, but what these weeks also do that is underrated, they will create life momentum for you if you allow them to in these weeks. So it's not just the ALP that you're going to get. These teach you how to have the work, ha the healthy habits, the thinking big, the, the work schedule, all that kind of, it shows you what you can do if you really set your mind to it. So these weeks are bigger than just the number. Five, love is a given. Trust and respect are earned. So, you know, we are voted top 25 happiest workplaces in the nation. You walk into our, and I, and I know you, I've been in your office. You walk in there, it's nice, it's beautiful. There's, there's games, you know, there's people high-fiving and, um, and, and laughing. And, you know, everybody loves, you know, that's what it is. We don't, we don't deal with any hate or negativity in our, it's not how we were raised. It's not in us. It's not what we want in business. So we're all teammates, right? We're all family members in the deal. We're all chasing stuff. We're, a, lot of, a lot of people, you know, they end up dating, getting married in our deal. They're best friends. They're they're in each other's weddings. We, love, you know, we just genuinely love each other. And that starts from the top down. But respect in business isn't a given. There, you could have love. To, uh, 
it, without the, the, the to respect, uh, as a human, it's a given, but in business, it's not a given. You have to earn it. So everybody wants to be the man, the woman. Everybody wants respect, right? Most people, they want to have respect in their career. They want to have respect in business. To get respect in our business, it's earned and it's only earned through results. And that's, that's, that is me being a little real and, and cutthroat with you guys, but it's true. That's business and sales business. And I'm going to take it a step further. It's not just getting results. It's getting consistent results. Because as soon as we see someone go up on the results radar, we look to see, is it consistent results? Because consistent <laughs> results shows emotional stability, right? Erratic behavior Erratic results comes from erratic thinking and erratic emotional behavior. They just go hand in hand. So I know when I see someone get results and continue to results, that's a stable person. That's someone that we could do business with. They're starting to earn my respect in business. So uh, respect, go get yourself some respect with your, your results this week. And the last thing that I'm going to uh, close out with, I wrote down is, are you a wimp? Or are you a warrior? And that sounds, <laughs> are you a wimp or warrior? Anybody know who Bill Volsick is? Mm. Bill Volsick is a gentleman in Pittsburgh that beat the snot out of me one day. And uh, he kicked the crap out of me. <laughs> and he kicked the crap out of me. I, I, he was a hired trainer. He's, a, he's hired. He's a, he's a friend of mine that kicked the crap out of me. He's a professional fighter. And if you see the gentleman, you know, he uh, – he looks like one of those guys from 300. You rip his shirt off. He has this like chin strapped to a V and looks mean and whatnot. So I, I train with him, you know, on my quest to being good at boxing you know, uh, that I'm still chasing. He has a couple, you know, MMA fights, a couple pro boxing. Very good trainer. He's been doing this for years. So we're training in my, in my basement. I have a gym in my basement. And has anybody here ever fought wrestled uh jujitsu box anything along those lines if you know in a, not, not on a street fight but yeah maybe there too you know there in in wrestling or there, there comes times where you're like especially if you're not new you don't know how to breathe and pace yourself you get so tired in there that picture the most tired you've ever been to the point where you can't even lift your arms right it's round six you're not used to this. You're dead tired. You don't have it in you to go another second. You can't even get your arms up. But at the same time, somebody's going to try to break your face. So it's not like you're just tired of sitting in a chair. You have to try to get your arms up, try to look tough still, a game face and stuff. And, and you, there's all these things, moving parts happening at once, and you're completely exhausted. That's why you know, training for wrestling, fighting, it's awesome for your mental toughness and confidence. It helps in business because you get faced with these, 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 these things. So now, anyway, long story short, I'm, I'm 45 seconds left in the round. I can't keep my hands up. And I go like this, like, like shell up, like I'm done. I got nothing. And he's like, starts yelling at me. He's like, no, he's like, no, put your hands up. Let's go. We've got 45 seconds left. So I finished the round out. Right. I, I'm, you know, I'm like, all right, all right. And after the round, he says, this is a few years ago, he gave me great advice. He goes, look, you're going to have these moments in there where you're completely dead, tired, and you have nothing left in the tank. And when that happens, you have two choices, right? Choice one is you show up like a little, and he called me a name. He said, you do that. That's, that's your choice one. Choice two is to say, F no. And just throw everything you have. Find that extra switch and just throw. Whether they're ugly punches, haymakers, whatever you got, even if you get popped in your face, at least you're going out on a shield like that. And that is what a warrior does. Shelling up is what a wimp does. And a warrior keeps throwing. So whenever life throws some shit at you, Whenever you have some hard times, when things don't go your way, and it's just you versus you, whatever that may be in your life, we get to choose whether we're just wimps and we go like this or a warrior. And what a warrior does is they just keep coming. No matter what, they're just going to keep coming. So I encourage you to accomplish what you want. Anybody that probably accomplished what you, what you want to have, whether that's a position, quality of life, finances, whatever it may be, they're warriors. They just keep coming.
they'll keep coming and they don't shell up like that whenever time. So warrior or wimp. I hope we're dealing with a bunch of warriors this week, guys. I'm, I, I'm, I feel like we are, and I uh, wish you guys the best. Thank you for having me on the call. I genuinely, genuinely am rooting for you guys to accomplish some good things this week, great things this week. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you, man. Give it up for Maddie, guys. Make some noise wherever you're at. We appreciate you, man. Stay warm over there. Thanks, Thank Matt. We're gonna we're gonna heat it up here, guys. Let's rock it. I'll talk to you guys later. Appreciate you, Maddie. Thanks, guys. Let's get it. Let's go.